Hi, I'm Etan Greenspoon from Columbia Engineering, and it's a pleasure to be able to share with you a little bit about what I'll be talking about this evening at MAA's Carriage House. So computer graphics has come a long way. We can now see chisel marks from artwork all the way across the world. We can see films, and we can see buildings before they've even been built. But all of these images are frozen in time. And what I want to talk to you about today is computing motion. So here's a take uh, by Sean McDuffie from Blue Sky Studios and his co-workers in which they animated a hand moving through hair. And uh, in order to do this, the animators and software developers need to take into account lots of different physical phenomena. How do we do this on the computer? And in computer graphics and storytelling, how do we do so qualitatively? So how do we model the qualitative aspects of a physical system? And the answer that I like to preach is follow the geometry. So here's an example of what I mean by that. Here's the orbit of planets around the sun. And there's lots of different ways that we can discuss the motion of planets around the sun. But my favorite is Kepler's second law. What Kepler said is that if you draw a line from the sun to the planet, and that line will sweep out a wedge over time. And for equal intervals of time, the wedges will have the same area. That's the point. The same area is what I mean by following the geometry. Now, who proved Kepler's second law for the first time? The proof dates back to Isaac Newton. And what's beautiful is that Newton's proof looks at triangles and trapezoids and basic shapes like this, which can be directly translated into discrete computer algorithms, discrete steps that a computer can take to advance a system forward in time. So here's a take from Weta Digital, where they were doing some exercises with hair, putting hair through the ringers. And as the hair moves forward in time, it's using these kinds of algorithms. But of course, there's more to moving the hair than just moving it forward in time. What about the fact that the hair bends? Here's a take of the hair being used in, to animate uh, furry creatures in The Hobbit. So to talk about the bending of the hair and to talk about many other physical phenomena, I like to turn to differential geometry, the mother tongue of most physical theories. And on the computer, we use discrete differential geometry, which is the discrete analog that works with points and triangles. And we'll be talking about that this evening. So one of the examples we'll bring up is the story of curves on the plane, and correspondingly, the story of discrete curves on the plane. For curves on the plane, we'll write down a theorem, and then we'll write down the same theorem for discrete curves on the plane. And in that way, we will carry over structures from the smooth to the discrete setting. So when you look at hair, it's an example of a slender filament, and those exist at lots of spatial scales, all the way from DNA to cables falling on the ocean floor. And what they all have in common is that they can twist as well as bend. So how do we capture the twisting? And to do that, we're going to decorate each curve with a material frame. And this material frame can be shown here as an orthonormal frame attached to the curve. Or you can envision it by a roller coaster ride along the curve. And as the roller coaster twists and turns, that's the material frame rotating. So by attaching a material frame to each point on the curve, we'll be able to capture phenomena like this Twizzler effect, or the formation of plectonemes when we twist elastic rods at both ends. And to do this, understand this notion of twist, we're going to have to ask for the twist-free frame and discuss a notion of parallel transport. So here it is, again, in the smooth setting, and then we'll be talking about it in our talk also in the discrete setting. Again, the name of the game is moving from the smooth to the discrete. Once we have both bending and twisting, we're going to have great effects and great looking hair, but it's going to have a lot of collisions and tangles. 
And in order to get this nice knotted hair, the computer needs to resolve all of the collisions between individual strands. And resolving these collisions is not easy at all. In fact, here's what happens when you do it wrong. The simulation blows up. So we're going to talk about some of the nonlinearities that are inherent to, co to computing contact between thin materials. And we're going to talk about adaptive series expansion methods that allow the computer to capture these nonlinearities accurately so that we can get great looking hair animations such as this one here. After we talk about curves, bending, twisting, and colliding, we'll briefly turn our attention to fabric so that our characters in our movies aren't naked. And we'll actually refer back to one of the great mathematicians and, uh, and, and mother of elasticity, Sophie Germain, who won a kilogram of gold in 1815 for explaining how a plate vibrates. And she did so by writing down an energetic formulation in terms of the mean curvature squared of the plate. So we'll look at that and how we discretize it, and then we'll apply that to getting nice looking motion of fabric, which can be used to animate garments on animated characters, but it can also be used to construct garments for armadillos or for the fashion industry. So after we look at that, we'll briefly mention that of course we need to also capture collisions between all the layers of garments, and we'll realize that every day people in the visual effects industry are looking to see what new exciting ideas mathematicians have come up with. So thank you for staying tuned and I hope you stick around for the full talk.